Hello there, Earthling. This is a microphone, and I am going to review it. It is the Peluso P414. It costs about $1,200. Ouch. I did buy it with my own money, and if this video is helpful, consider supporting the channel so I can continue to produce these videos. All of my recording settings will be listed in the description as well as the doobly-doo. And now let's talk about what comes in the box, but I can't throw that. As you saw, you get a hard shell storage box. You'll of course get the microphone, a dust cover, a shock mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, I almost forgot you also get a foam windscreen to go right on top of the microphone. Then as far as the build quality, I don't have any real complaints about this thing. It has an all metal chassis as well as a metal mesh grill with a little bit of give to it. On the front you have a four way polar pattern selector switch. On the rear you have two switches, the first one being a minus 10 or minus 20 dB pad, the second being a 75 or 150 hertz high pass filter. On the bottom you'll find the XLR port. And years ago I asked what the manufacturing location of this mic was and they told me that the capsules are hand built in the US and the microphone as a whole is assembled in the USA. I'm not going to read all of the specs to you, but I will have them listed in the description down below, and I will also include the graphs that I could find up on screen in case you want to pause and take a closer look at anything. Starting on hypercardioid, moving around to 90 degrees to show you that coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotating and ending at zero degrees. Now on cardioid, moving around to 90 degrees to show you that coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the capsule. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now on figure eight, moving around to the first null area. Continuing around to the rear lobe of sensitivity, there it is. Continuing to the second null area, there we go. And then at the front lobe of sensitivity. And then on omnidirectional, moving around to 90 degrees, continuing around to 180, going around the second 90 degree angle, and then going around to the front of the microphone. Now let's see how this thing handles plosive rejection. Please prepare pizza pronto pals. Please provide prepared pizza pronto pals. Please prepare pizza pronto and provide pal pals, pals, pals. <laughs> The software malfunctioned there for a second. <laughs> I don't know what was happening. Now I am right on top of the P414 and here is how it's sounding. Now about six inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it sounds. About one foot away from the P414, about two feet away from the P414, and about four feet away from the Peluso P414. Now I'm typing on a Gatoron Blue keyboard to see how much of my voice and how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for gamers, this is sad W spacebar key click clack. Now here is how the Peluso P414 sounds six inches from my mouth in a relatively well-treated room. And now here is how the 414 sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room on the cardioid polar pattern. Next, let's see how effective the microphone and the mount are at rejecting shocks. I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. I am also annoying, so I am going to tap on the mic to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now let's hear how the provided foam windscreen impacts the sound of the recording. So right now I'm a few inches off of the mic, the windscreen is not installed, and here's how it sounds. And here's how the microphone sounds with the provided foam windscreen. Do you hear any difference in tone or is it relatively transparent?
And here is yet another sample of the P414 without the provided foam windscreen on it. And here's another sample of the P414 with the included windscreen. How do you think it sounds? And let's see how the foam windscreen impacts the plosive rejection. Please provide pizza pronto. Please provide pizza pronto. Please provide pizza pronto. Please prepare and provide pizza pronto pals. Now I'm right on top of the P414 again to exaggerate the proximity effect. I do not have a high pass filter engaged and here's how it's sounding. Now I have switched on the 75 hertz high pass filter and you should hear a little bit of the low end get cleared up, but it's not gonna be too aggressive. And now I have turned on the 150 hertz high pass filter and this should clear up a lot of that proximity effect and a lot of that mud that can get a bit overwhelming when you're this close to the mic. All right, I do not have a pad engaged. Let's switch on the minus 10 dB pad and now we have done that and we should decrease by 10 dB. Let's go ahead and go to... Dead. The microphone is back finally, so it took a while to engage. Let's go minus. It is muted. We're back. And then if we go to zero dB, we get back to normal. Next, let's do a spoken word comparison between the P414 and a bunch of other microphones. This is the Peluso P414, six inches off, gain set at 33 dB on the Universal Audio X8. Let's hear the first mic. Now I'm on the Audio-Technica AT2020, six inches off, gain still set at 33 decibels. This microphone costs $100, and this is just being included as a point of reference. Let's go back to the Peluso and do a whole bunch more. Back on the P414 with no pad and no filter on the cardioid pattern, let's hear the second mic. Now I am on the AKG P420, cardioid pattern, no pad, no filters, six inches off, gain at 33 dB. This microphone costs about $200, and that's how it sounds compared to the P414. This is the P414 yet again to function as a palate cleanser. Let's do some more of these. Now I am on the Lewitt LCT440, six inches off, gain set at 33 dB. This is not multi-pattern. This microphone costs about $250 to $290, and here is how this sounds compared to the Peluso. Here I am back on the P414 once again, just to clear your ear holes out. That's enough talking, let's move on. Now I'm on the Rode NT2A, six inches off, gain still set at 33 dB. I am on the cardioid pattern with no pad and no filter engaged. This microphone costs about $400, and here is how this compares to the 414. This is the Peluso P14 yet again. You shouldn't be surprised, but this next microphone will shock you. Next, I am on the AKG C214. I do not have a pad or a filter engaged. I am six inches off, gain still set at 33 decibels. This microphone costs around $480. And here is how this sounds compared to the 414. Say the same thing every time. All right, back on the P414. Here is how it sounds. You should be used to it. Let's go to another mic. Now I'm on the SE Electronics 4400A, six inches off, gain at 33 dB, cardioid pattern with no pad and no filter engaged. This microphone costs about $500 and doll hairs, and here is how it sounds. Let's do some more. I believe we're over the halfway point. Here is another palate cleanser on the P414. Nothing's changed. Let's do some more. Now, I am on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. TLM 103. I am six inches off. Gain at 33 dB. This microphone costs $1,195. So it's essentially the same price as the 414. And that's why I'm including it. You may be considering both of these. That is enough talking. Let's move on. Okay, I am an auditory Q-tip on the Peluso P414. Here's how it sounds. Let's go to another one. 
Now I am on the Austrian audio 800 plus 10 plus 8. I am 6 inches off with my gain set at 33 dB. Cardioid pattern, no pad and no filter. This is a multi-pattern solid state mic made by XAKG people. It costs about 1250 bucks. And here is how it sounds. Let's do a handful more. Here is the Peluso P414 yet again. I can taste the end. Let's go to another mic. Now onto the fun stuff. I am now talking into the AKG C414 XLS. Cardioid pattern, no pad, no filters. Six inches off, gain at 33 dB. This microphone costs around 1,320 bucks. And I would say this is direct competition to the 414. Same model number even. Let's do two more. This is your penultimate palette cleanser on the P414. Here is how it sounds. Let's hear the second to last mic. Next, I am on the AKG C414 XL2. You can tell by the gold grill. Cardioid pattern, no pad, no filter, six inches off, gain at 33 dB. This mic also costs 1,320 bucks. And here is how it sounds compared to the Peluso 414. And we have one more microphone to go, so this is your final palette cleanser on the Peluso P414. Let's jump to the last microphone right. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI, cardioid pattern, no pad, no filter, six inches off, gain set at 33 dB. I am living very dangerously. <laughs> the meter is scaring me. This microphone costs about $3,700. And it is meant to be a direct and fair comparison. That's what this is. <laughs> Let's go. I'm an idiot. Let's go to the music test now. I'm fully aware it sounds like filthy, filthy innuendo, <laughs> but I assure you it is not. I am just a rare breed. I am a huge fan of candy corn, and I only buy it right after Halloween once a year when it's on sale because discount candy corn equals best candy corn. That is an undeniable fact. And let's just move on to the conclusion. <laughs> I'm recording the conclusion on a different day, but have no fear. I still have the same bad attitude, and I'm going to say the same stuff all over again. With a price of $1,200, say it with me, this thing has a lot of very steep competition. 
And first up, as far as pros, I thought the off-axis coloration on this thing was fantastic. I also thought each of the four polar patterns sounded great. You're getting an insanely high max SPL of 162 decibels, which is bonkers. You're getting two high-pass filters, both which are very functional and sound good. And if you care about it, you are getting a very high-fidelity sound out of this thing. But then as far as cons, I didn't think it did the best job at plosive rejection. Also, the provided shock mount feels pretty cheap. It is relatively effective, but it doesn't instill confidence about longevity. So I would like a better feeling shock mount, especially for this price. And I say this every single time, firm microphone clip as well, please. That would be helpful. Thank you. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions about the Peluso P414? As far as the overall sound, I would classify this as a bright and very airy sounding microphone. It does have some depth in the low end. The mids are, I wouldn't say recessed, but they are certainly far from dominant. And then you get this boost in the treble and air, which gives you this very high fidelity and very detailed sound. On the electric guitar, I thought it worked well. It captures a lot of articulation, but it is a lot in the treble and air. And depending on your tone, that can either be a positive or a huge negative. On the acoustic guitar, I thought it sounded fantastic. I loved how detailed and lively the upper frequency sounded. I thought it brought the acoustic to life. For singing vocals, I really, really dug it for this application. I think that boost in the air frequencies just adds this shimmer to the vocals that I find to be really flattering. And when the vocals are layered, Dude, I, I dug that way more than I should have. I loved how it sounded. For spoken word, on the other hand, I think it's a bit much. I think it's a bit much. That boost in the top end is very brilliant sounding, but I think it's a bit unnecessary for solo spoken word recordings. I am sure there are plenty of people who will love that super detailed sound. I just prefer a little bit tamer of a top end when the vocals aren't competing with a bunch of other sound sources because a boost like that that makes the upper frequency so dominant, I find it to be a touch fatiguing and a little bit unpleasant. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up the video and discuss if I would recommend the Peluso P414. If this mic is offering a sound that you're looking for and $1,200 is within your budget, then I would say go for it because I don't have any deal breakers with this thing. I want to point out this mic offered a different sound than every microphone I put it up against. Other than the AKG C214, every other microphone sounded a little bit dull and a little bit rolled off. Some people are absolutely going to love that really bright and airy and high fidelity sound. Other people are going to hate it. They're going to want their mics to tame the top frequencies a little bit and soften it up do you a little bit of favors this microphone is not doing that for you it is capturing in super high detail exactly what you put in front of it and that can either be a really great thing or a really negative thing depending on the sound source and the fun part about all of this is you get to decide which of those people you are do you want something that is going to tame the higher frequencies or do you want this super high fidelity and airy sound